it's been a while since I've done a comment of a coffee video, so I thought it was time. And there's something that I really want to talk about, and it's quite difficult to talk about. So what am I talking about? Why do we feel such a desperate need to become CAs and to complete this qualification? And why is it so incredibly important to us that we can't let it go? Now, let's disclaim, reclaim, I guess, because <laughs> it comes first. A few preclaimers. One, I realize how important this is because obviously I've been there. You know, it took me 11 years to get my qualification. It was a horrible process. I fought all along the way for all sorts of things. It was ugly. It was a lot of sacrifices. I had a feeling that it was all or nothing. It wasn't articulated, but I genuinely had a feeling like if I wasn't going to be a CA, I'd be a failure. I'd be nothing. For me, it was very binary because that's kind of our personality. It really is all or nothing, right or wrong, pass or fail, success or complete failure. And so for me, it was either I'm going to qualify as a CA or I'm going to be a nothing. I'm never going to be able to survive. I'm never going to be financially stable and it's going to be nothing. So I want to make that as a disclaimer because um, I really understand that feeling and that drive. I have to do this. One. Two, it is a valuable qualification so it's not as though I'm saying oh you're working towards something that's not really important or not really valuable and so you know why bother I completely recognize that so why am I having this conversation I've been working with students for 17 18 years that's after my own journey so this is a long time that I've been doing this and I think over that time the amount of students that I've seen come and go through the qualification process that has just destroyed their self-esteem and their belief in themselves and their understanding about what they can do just breaks my heart. And part of the problem with our binary personalities, our perfectionist nature, is that we can't let stuff go even if it's not good for us. So the qualification process, ideally, the CASA qualification process, if we're looking at that, and obviously this, you know, the same concept applies if you're doing other qualifications, but I'm talking specifically here about the CA qualification, CASA, ideally is seven years, right? So if you come out of school, you go straight into university, your three years degree, one year CTA, and then three years articles, right? So four, four years of studying, three years of articles, fine. Seven years. Seven years is not bad to, to give to your qualification, right? So 24, 25, you're a qualified CA, you can start your career, you can build from there. Fine, not a problem. However, the reality is that for a large majority of people, it is not a seven-year journey, right? And I don't know what the statistics are because I don't think there are any. I don't know where I could find them. But in my experience, or maybe you know, it's just the students that, that I deal with, these are not seven-year journeys. They are very long journeys. You know, I know way too many people have done a CTA five years and they're still trying. You know, they're still trying to get their, their CTA five years later, their postgrad five years later. They're taking six, seven, eight years to get their degree. They're taking three years to do to do their first board exam. They've got five years articles because they started while they degree, you know, while they're doing their degree. And so the years continue. If you're making progress, it's one thing to say, well, I'm just, you know, I'm going to keep doing this because I'm making progress. So in, in my case, for example, it took me five years to do my degree, but I was making progress. I couldn't afford to do any more modules. So I had to you know, do the modules that I could afford to do. And I did pass my CTA on my first attempt. Thank, thank heavens. And so although it was taking long, there was progress. But now what, what about when you're sitting in a position where you are looking at redoing CTA for the third time, fourth time, fifth time, for example, is it worth it? And this is such a difficult thing to say. And even as I say it, I know how it's going to sound to a lot of people. But my concern here is your sense of self-worth and your validation. And whether or not this is the only choice or this is something you have to do, even if it takes up your entire life and leaves you devastated and heartbroken and feeling insanely stupid. So I want to talk about some stuff, maybe a little bit, of perspective on the situation, on the qualification. I want you to realize a couple of things and you can do what you like with the information, but I think I just, I want a little balanced perspective on the whole scenario. Okay, so some stuff. One, you have to realize that it's a very, very, very small room, right? So you're in a room 
with a bunch of people doing the same thing as you. So you're, you're obsessed about your qualification because you kind of have to be because of the time that it takes you. And so you're in a, you're in a room with a whole bunch of people working towards pretty much exactly the same thing. So you're all writing the same exams. You're all doing the same qualification. You're all doing the same board exam. You're all doing the same, well, you're actually not the same articles, but you're all doing the same thing. And so you're sitting there, other people are ahead of you, behind you, other people are passing you, other people, you know, you're passing other people, but you're all in the same room. So it is absolutely impossible for you not to feel like there's something wrong with you if you're not making progress, because everybody around you is making progress. And the reality is when things aren't going well for us, we have a tendency to focus on the people who are doing better than us, as opposed to all the people that are behind us, right? But what I need you to realize is that you are in a very, very small room. And the reason that's important is because when you're in there and all you all you have is a whole bunch of people who are doing the same thing, obsessing about the same thing around you, we have a tendency to forget that there's an entire world out there, a huge world of opportunities, of space, of stuff, of, 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 of experience, of exposure, of different work, whatever the case is. There's a huge world out there, but we can't see that world because we're in, we're in the space. And we're obsessed by it. Now, again, it's a very different situation if this is an ideal journey, seven years, let's do this, let's go. But if you're sitting here and you're contemplating doing ETA again for the fourth or fifth time, it is a different conversation. It is a different conversation because I watch what it does to students and I don't like it. You're putting your life on hold for this thing. And I don't know if I, I like, I don't like the idea of, of students throwing years and years and years of their life away to this thing that might not actually be for them. And again, as I say that, I know that the only interpretation that people have of that is, yeah, it, it's not for me because I'm too stupid, you know, because I'm not smart enough to do it. And I think it's so frustrating for a whole bunch of reasons, but that's not what I'm saying. You're in a room with people doing the same thing, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's where you have to be or else you're not going to be successful, right? It's kind of like being at high school where everybody's doing the same thing and everybody's doing stuff and you feel that intense peer pressure. I'm going to die if I don't do the same stuff, wear the same stuff, have the same stuff as these people around me. And then two years after you've left high school, you can't even remember their names. But it was so important to you at the time. When you step out of that room, when you step out of that space, you realize that there's more to the world. There's more opportunities. There's more space. There's more like, oh my goodness, there's a world out there. And the rest of the world doesn't care about the stuff. You do, but nobody else does. And again, I'm not saying it's not important, but I want some balance because I have students that I know that have like committed their entire lives to this and it does nothing but break them down. I, I know that most students that I work with who are repeating CTA feel more stupid than they did when they were doing first year accounting. And they know so much more. I mean, there's so much knowledge in their head. They're, they're, they're capable of doing so much more, but because they're in this room where they're not feeling like they're making the progress that they want to. They're feeling like I am so incredibly stupid. They felt smarter when they were in first year than they do now. I don't want that for you because the reality is that you are incredibly smart and you've done amazing things. The room might not be for you for a whole bunch of different reasons. And maybe it was at some stage, but it's not anymore. I don't know. And obviously every, everyone's different and everybody's got to think about this for themselves. So this is not a generalization, but this is just, I want us to think about some stuff differently. There are opportunities out there that you went to work at a company or you went to work at a more entry-level position and you spent five years there working your way up the corporate ladder within that space, maybe studying other stuff or getting training or on-the-job experience. In five years, you can work your way up in a company pretty well. But if you're spending those five years repeating CTA, you're not going anywhere. So students are like, yeah, but once I, you know, once I get that, it's gonna, every, the world's going to change. And then every, yeah, but not necessarily because you could be making that progress in another space. Whereas here, yeah, you're still sitting in the same space for five years. You're behind, but you could, you could have moved ahead in a different way. It's very difficult to have a feeling or to sense that there's anything outside of this. And there's a few reasons why. So I want to talk a little bit about the reasons why we're so stuck to this thing. But the first thing I want you to realize is part of the reason that this is so obsessive 
is because you're in a very small room with a very small group of people who are doing exactly the same thing and you are surrounded by this. And so there's nothing else, right? There's nothing else. And in a way that's really positive because it means that everybody understands you and their support and role models and all the rest of that. So yeah, obviously there's a lot of positivity to that, but there's also a downside to that, which is this is the only world. This is my world. This is all that there is. And that's not, that's not true, but it's very hard for it not to be where you spend so much time there. Fine. So why, why do we feel like it's this or nothing? It's a very fascinating thing. There's two things going on here. One, I generally find that students and even qualified CAs crave validation. There's a human desire, but it's also certain personality types are more prone to needing validation than others. And I generally find that a lot of the CAs, qualified CAs that I've worked with, need validation. They're always worried that they're not good enough. They're waiting for some kind of something, some measurement. They need some kind of measurement to say you are okay. So that in the business world, that comes from promotions, maybe your own business being successful, comes from recognition at work, bonuses, different job titles, different responsibilities, et cetera. So that doesn't go away. In, in the studying space, obviously your validation is passing exams. Now, that's a normal human need, fine. But when you're in an environment, and let's talk about the exams, when you're in an environment with so many exams and such intense exams and everybody's writing the same exams, it is impossible not to develop the habit of waiting for someone else to validate you. Because no matter how I feel about my studying and no matter how I feel about my knowledge, and I'm like, I learned a lot this semester or I learned a lot this year and this is great. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how I feel about what I've learned. The only thing that matters is whether I've passed that exam. So I am trained by default, I am trained by the system, by the education system, that I have to wait for somebody to tell me whether I am smart enough. Am I good enough? Am I good enough to pass? Because if they say no, then clearly I'm not good enough and I I can't make progress. So the dynamic behind that is important because it means that you on your own are not used to deciding how you feel about your intelligence. You have outsourced that. And you have completely handed that over to someone else. In this case, you know, your university to say you pass or you fail. Now that's completely understandable because the reality is they have to be the ones who tell you that. So it's totally understandable why that happened. Totally understandable. But it still creates a certain habit for you. And it feeds into a very dangerous, toxic habit, which is I have to wait for somebody else to tell me that I'm good enough. I can't make that decision myself. Again, I totally understand where it comes from, but it is dangerous because in your life, when you don't have exams, you're the one who has to decide, I feel good enough, but now you can't because you're waiting for other people to tell you that you're good enough. You're also waiting for other people to tell you that you're ready. So you're continually waiting for other people to tell you, what do I need to learn? What do I need to know? Where do I need to go? What's my next step? One of the things about a qualification path, especially one that's this long, is that it provides a very, very defined structure that tells you what to do next. Once you've done this, you do that. Once you do that, you do that. I tell you what to study. I tell you what to learn. I will tell you what to focus on. I tell you what you need. I tell you where to work. I tell you where. I give you everything. All of your decisions are given to you. That's, again, that's completely understandable in terms of the dynamic of the qualification, but it also is very safe. As we grow up you know, and become adults, one of the things that we find is that nobody's making decisions for us and we have to make our own decisions. And that's terrifying. Where do I work? What career do I have? And it's terrifying because I don't know what the outcome is going to be. So maybe I decide to work there and it's a terrible decision. I'm only going to know that by doing it. And by then it's too late. Whether you're talking about relationships or life or moving or work or studying or jobs or friends, whatever the case is, as an adult, part of that dynamic is that you have to make your own decisions and you're not going to know whether it's a good thing or bad thing until after it's happened. You might be the one who screws it up. Other people might screw it up for you. There's stuff that's in your control, stuff that's not in your control. But the reality is that you're standing there with an open space and you have to decide which direction to walk. So on the one hand, that's freeing. That's freedom. I can go where I like. I can do what I like. And some people love that. But other people are scared of that because I don't know if I'm making the right decision. Especially if you're worried that you might not be good enough or you lack self-confidence or you don't have a very strong sense of your own identity, maybe. Certain people, own personalities are, are more drawn to like, look, just give me a structure. I want a path. 
And the CA qualification is a very, very structured path. So one of it is like, okay, once I've made that decision, I don't need to make any other decision. You know, I just need to do what you tell me. It sounds so weird, I know, but think about it. So if, even if it's just a seven-year qualification, that is seven years of your life as an adult that you're not making decisions about what you need to do. Because you made one decision, which was, I'm going to be a CA, and now this is what you have to study, this is what you have to do, this is what you have to pass, this is where you have to work, this is what they have, you know, these are the choices you have. It's all very limited, and there you go. And then at the end of it, you qualify, and they go, great stuff, you've got the world at your feet, and then you realize it's all these open spaces, and I don't know where to go. What do I do now? I don't have anyone telling me. So a lot of people I know, and myself as well, when I qualified, I realized there was this terror of now what? I don't have any t- anybody telling me what to do anymore. I don't have anyone telling me what the best thing is and where I should and shouldn't go. And now it's up to me. And I don't know how to do that. For me, when I qualified, I was 28. So you know, up until the age of 28, I had a specific path laid out for me. And my only mental focus was taking steps along that path. Now I'm like, you have the world at your feet, Yvonne. What are you going to do? I don't, know. I don't know. I don't know how to do it. I don't know where to go. All of these opportunities that I'm told that I'm going to have, like, where are they? Like, are they com- coming to me? Where do I find them? It's terrifying. So one of the things that we need to realize is that we as humans, especially with different types of personalities, we find safety in structure. We find safety in a path where someone else has decided what it is we need to do. And there's like a guaranteed success at the end of it. Because like, okay, the CA qualification, you know, you're going to be successful. It's good. It's great. There's going to be jobs for you. And so therefore it's safe. And I think especially for people that came out of school and they weren't entirely sure what they wanted to do and maybe their families pressured them into it or like, if you don't really know what to do, this is a great path because you know you're going to be successful if you do it. Like it's, it's a good job. It's a good career. You're kind of sold into the idea that as long as I do what you tell me, I'm going to be successful. And so you're on a very structured path for a long time. If that's what you know, if that's all you know, stepping off of that path and going, well, I'm going to take another direction is insane. It's, it's insane. It's like a fish jumping out of water. I'm not doing that. I'm going to die. I don't, I don't know what there is out there. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't have any skills in that space. I, haven't, I don't make decisions like this. This is all I know. So it's almost like we have blinkers on. Some personality types don't like the structure. And so they pull away from that. And they're like, I don't want you telling me what to do for the rest of my life. I have other plans. I want to create my own opportunities. I want to explore the world. But there's certain personality types and I find... You know, people who have a tendency to stay on the qualification path for long times have, and they don't necessarily realize it, but there's a lot of safety in the structure of like, as long as I do what you tell me, I'm going to be successful. And this is especially true if you come from families and you come from situations that where there's financial difficulties, because part of the massive stress in your life is I need to be financially stable. I need to look after my parents. I want to look after my family. I don't want to be like my parents. I don't want to be like my family. I want to make a difference. So if you're coming from a history of financial struggles, you definitely are like, if this is a guaranteed success, I'm in. Like, I'll do whatever it takes because I have to be there. <laughs> and if you tell me I need to do that, if I have to cut off my arm to do it, like that's going to be worth it. So those are three things that it's difficult to talk about because I totally understand that some people will go, some people kind of see it as a negative and go, you know, you're saying bad stuff about your qualification. But the reality is every single thing in life has two sides to it, has positives and negatives. The greatest thing in the world has positives and negatives. Everything has positives and negatives. And so to not look at the realities and, and look at things from both sides doesn't make any sense. No qualification on earth is so amazingly, brilliantly, wonderful, divine that there's nothing we can look at and go, we need to be careful about that. Everything is, right? And so your qualification, I'm more interested in what it does to you as a human being. I'm more interested in you as a person. And for people that I have watched redo and continually repeat stuff, all I see, well, not all, but a lot of what I see is breaking the individual down when if they stepped away from that and found and created their own path it would obviously be difficult to begin with because it is completely un. and you are in this room of everybody doing the same thing so you're kind of like what is out there there's no one there's no i need another path we kind of want to jump from one path to the other so you know, when students pull away from the ca qualification they'll immediately jump into acca or SEMA or SAP or whatever the case is because they need a path like i know paths i know structure i know paths I want a path. I want certainty, you know? But again, I totally understand that. But the amount of personal, and I'm going to use the word trauma because if this is something that you've struggled with, it is gut-wrenching 
to have to redo a year again and again and again, an exam again and again and again, and it just breaks down your spirit. And you have to decide whether this is something that is worth it. But I want you to think about how much unconscious stuff there is playing into your decision. The three things that I've spoken about is the fact that you are in a small room. It's impossible for it not to have a massive influence on your decisions because you're making the same decisions as everyone else. It feels safe. It feels comfortable. It feels like this is what you have to do to fit in. And if you don't fit in, you're stupid. That's, it's impossible not to feel that way. The reason that I don't belong here is because I'm stupid. Because everybody who does belong here passed all their exams, they did all the stuff and they're in the right place. And so they, they're, they're successful, they're smart. And if I don't belong here, it's because I'm stupid. Well, that's really not true. But, but how do you feel any other way? So the room you're in doesn't help. The fact that our personality styles and the amount of exams that we have to go through, that environment definitely creates a need for validation and it breaks down your sense of your own ability to measure or think about your own intelligence. I don't care how smart I feel. If I failed the exam, it's meaningless. I'm stupid because I failed the exam. No, what do you think about your own intelligence? I don't think about my own intelligence. <laughs> yep. I don't think about my own intelligence. I wait for my examiner to tell me whether I'm intelligent. They'll tell me. It's rubbish. It's so rubbish. But how do you feel any other way? So the need for validation, and I want to warn you, the need for validation is not going to go away when you qualify. It just changes into something else. Now, so you're in a room. The room you're in doesn't help. The fact that you're trained, if you will, to wait for and rely on other people's validation of your intelligence and who you are is doesn't help. And the fact that we have a tendency to want the safety of a path, of a structured path that has a guaranteed success at the end, that keeps us in that space. I just have to look at that because at the end of the line, the flag at the end is success. Once I get the qualification, I'm safe. That's kind of how we feel. Once I get that qualification, I'm safe. The reality is you're not. It won't actually work that way. And over the years with shifts in economy, et cetera, et cetera, the CA qualification isn't a blank check. And it's, it's not, you know, the starting salaries of entry-level CAs are not what they used to be in terms of the rest of the economy. Stuff has changed. Stuff has changed. It used to be that once you qualified as a CA, you got a really great salary. And so even though you spent a lot of years doing that, you know, the kick up to, to your like, okay, I'm qualified now was, was really big proportion, you know, in proportion to everything else, but it doesn't work that way. So you, you need to look into that and go like, is it what I think it is? Is it what I expected? So if I look around, like what are the entry-level CA salaries and do I know what I'm, or what I'm getting? Because once you qualify, that's kind of when you start your career. Yeah. Like, what do you want to do? That's, that's when you start. So there's three things that I want you to think about. The room you're in governs your identity, governs who you are. And sometimes you don't have the mental space or ability to make decisions for yourself because you're in a group of people who are absolutely obsessed about the same thing and you're swept along by it, even if it's breaking you down. And I don't want that for you. Two, we need validation. And three, we crave structure and we crave a path and we crave someone telling us what to do that will guarantee us success because we're too terrified to make that decision on our own because we're worried that's not going to end success and we just, you know, we can't handle that. We don't like failure. Um, now, you may listen to this and go, oh, that's really interesting. Hmm, you have a good point and carry on with your journey. And that's fine, but I want you to be aware of that. I always want you to hold that balance and that objectivity in your head to go, is this good for me? Is this good for me? Am I breaking myself down? And is this worth it? I want perspective. So even if you go, oh, that's a really interesting point. Hmm, let me think about that. But like, this is good. That's cool. That's great. Or you might look at it and go, that's a really interesting point. I never thought about it, but this really is killing me. And I don't know if it's worth it. You need to think about that. You need to think about that. And I do often talk to students. I often have discussions with students along those lines where they're going, I don't know what else to do. Like, I've never wanted to admit this to myself. I've never wanted to admit it to anyone else. But this is breaking me. And I don't know if it's worth it. I don't know. Yeah, it's a good question to ask. It's a difficult question. It's, no, it's a completely difficult question. But yeah, we have to ask. And at the very least, I want you to take your validation back. The exam is the exam is the exam, right? And I get that and I know that I know how to, but at the same time, I need you to take control and take ownership of your own validation. There are so many things that impact that exam that have nothing to do with your intelligence, right? 
And so I don't want you measuring your intelligence and how you feel about yourself on the basis of what other people are saying, because you're going to go through your entire life doing that. I need you taking ownership of that and going, you know what, that exam sucked. But if I compare what I know now to what I knew at the beginning of the year, I have learned a lot. I'm smarter than I've ever been before. <laughs> you know, I've learned a lot and that is valuable. That is a positive thing, but I need you to own that. I don't want your entire psyche and self-esteem being crushed because someone else said that you weren't good enough. Well, that's what you interpreted from them. And again, I totally understand why. I mean, it's, it's impossible not to, but I need you to hold that objectivity in your head. I'm tired of seeing people who have immense potential in, in, in completely different aspects of life killing themselves and breaking themselves down when there is a possibility that it might not be the right decision for them. But we don't hear anything other than like, don't give up. You have to do this. It's got to be worth it. It doesn't matter if it takes 15 years of your life, like you have to do this. For some people that may be true and for some people that may not be true, but I don't hear enough people talking about the discussion of maybe you need to step off this path and find your path. And we can only see that as quitting. Ah, well, you're just quitting because you're, you're stupid and you don't, you, know, you don't have what it takes. No, that's really not true. But again, very difficult not to feel like it. So give it some thought. And I think if you take nothing else away from this discussion, understand that I realize and recognize and you need to recognize that the journey that you're on is incredibly difficult and can be soul destroying. And I don't want that for you. It is incredibly difficult. You need to look after yourself. It is not worth your life stress. It's not. It's not worth your sanity. Find another way. You know, CA is not the only path to success. Find another way if this is breaking you. And you'll find that the room that you were in, they don't watch you leave and go, ah, oh, look at you, you left, and now I'm going to watch you fail from a distance. No, everybody is so busy in that room focusing on their own journey, the moment you step away, you cease to exist. You may interact with a couple of people from there, but the reality, as soon as you're out of that room, and that applies to everything, everywhere you are, where you're in a small group of people doing the same thing, when you remove yourself, they forget about you because you're no longer part of them. And so nobody's watching you. Nobody's judging you. Nobody's doing that. You realize there's a whole other world out there and you may find another room. <laughs> you may find another room, but we kind of see it as if I stepped out the room, I've got everybody watching me going, ah, oh, there you go, you're a failure. That's not the truth. I want what's right for you. I want some balance. I want some perspective. I want some objectivity. And I want you to realize that I understand that this journey can be gut-wrenching, absolutely gut-wrenching. And I want you to be empowered to make the right decisions for you.